Hello and welcome everyone to Varsity Tutors Virtual Summer Camp. My name is Brian and we've got Nicole here from Rover.com. We know that, you know, especially those of you who have been with us for a lot of virtual school day and virtual summer camps, it's been an interesting few months for all of us with working from home and learning from home. One thing I don't think we've thought about enough though is how difficult it is on our dogs. We're home all the time and it sounds like or seems like it's a weekday or a weekend and yet everyone's glued to their laptops taking a class or working. So we thought tonight and on Thursday, we'd invite the dogs to, uh, to join in on the fun and be able to take a virtual class just like all the kids and work from home, just like the parents. So uh, we're really excited about this one. Uh, before we get started, a few housekeeping things. Nicole's going to ask you guys a handful of questions to see, you know, learn about your dogs um, and, and, and hear what you know about dog training. So use the chat box next to the screen we're at here. She's even at the end going to ask you which tricks you want to learn. And so there's a polling tool there. Keep it interactive and, and you know, ask questions too if you have them. We already have some great ones coming in. Um, anything you want to know about training your dog, ask those questions. We'll try to get to as many as we can toward the end. Awesome. Also... We think it's pretty cool that dogs are taking a class for maybe the first time ever in a, a format like this. So uh, if you can get a picture of your dog taking the class, we'll make sure there's a, a portion where we even call for it. And uh, Rossi, who's there on the screen too, will uh, will be taking a picture with you. Um, if you take a picture with your dog and upload it to Instagram, tag Rover, tag Varsity Tutors, you'll be entered to win. And uh, we'll show you the, uh, the prize box from Rover uh, in just a second. You'll be entered to win, which is pretty exciting. You'll love it. Your dog will love it. So um, with that said, uh, let's turn it over to, uh, to Nicole and Rossi. What do you guys have in store for us tonight? Hi, everyone. I'm Nicole Ellis. I'm a certified professional dog trainer. I have two dogs of my own, and I also have a fat horse who unfortunately could not fit in my living room to join us today. I've trained everything from bears to tigers, but most of all, my favorite is definitely dogs. So I'm really excited to go over dog training with everyone today. And everything I do is positive reinforcement. So before we get into that, I'm with Rover and they're the world's largest network of pet sitters and dog walkers. They believe everyone deserves unconditional love, which is what our dogs give us. And we're staying home more than ever. There's never been a better time to nurture that love with your dog. And if you're going out of town and you need someone, that's what Rover's there for. So today, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through the fundamentals of reward-based training. And we're gonna give you lots of tips. You'll be able to do stuff at home and this is a great time to have your dog with you throughout today's training. So let's go over what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about engagement and we're gonna do some engagement training. Don't worry, I'll explain what engagement is. I'm sure it's such a strange, confusing word. Then I'm gonna give you my top training terms and techniques and some tips for success. So you guys will set up for Thursday session and onwards. And after that, we're gonna go over a trick. So you guys will get to vote, tell me what you wanna learn. And then at the end, it's going to be a Q&A. So it's really important throughout all of this, you guys keep asking questions. And I'll be asking you guys to chime in, give us facts about your dogs, things like that. So with that said, why don't we get started? Hopefully everyone has their dogs with us. Let me know your guys' dogs' names. I'd love to know who's joining in with us. Rossi here is watching. Are there any more Rossies? <laughs> Probably not. That's okay. Um, I see people are writing their dogs' names, which I love. Um, lots of Mollies. I actually, my first dog was a Molly and there's a Rover. That's funny because we're with Rover. Who else is there? Um, lots of sports themes. So that's super fun. And unfortunately no sports right now, but we have our sport themes dogs. So keep chiming in with your dog's names. And I see some questions if we can have cat names. Absolutely. Chime in with your cat names. And a lot of today's training can be used for kitties too. So this isn't exclusive to dogs. If you have a cat, Get out those cat treats. It's a perfect time to get your kitty involved too. So with that said, let's jump right into dog training. That's why we're all here. So first up, we're gonna talk about engagement. And what is engagement? Engagement means your dog's engaged with you. So I'm a positive reinforcement trainer. Everything I do is positive, but I want my dog to work for me, not just for my treats. And that's where engagement's gonna help. It creates a stronger bond between you and your dog. And it builds on communication. So you can understand when your dog's happy, stressed, what your dog enjoys. And that's gonna help you guys learn together. And when quarantine's over and you guys are going to dog parks and you're going to your friends' houses with your dogs, it'll help you guys create a better relationship together. And that's really what it's all about. We want our pets to engage with us because of our relationship, not because of anything around. And that's gonna set you up for success 
whether you're even just walking around the block or you're trying to teach some fun tricks in your living room together. So there's multiple ways to teach engagement. And I'm just gonna go over a few of these now and follow along, you and your dogs can do these at home too. Rossi, you gonna help me? You're gonna want some dog treats. I use really tiny dog treats. I don't wanna make a mess because he's gonna be busy cleaning up that mess if you actually did now. <laughs> and it's gonna keep him focused and not get him full. You ready? Okay, Rossi. So first one is, our dogs don't really know what engagement is. And I want him to engage with me. And what I mean by that is he's gonna look up and he's gonna make contact and he's gonna kind of check in with me. But I need to teach him to do that because he doesn't understand. So how I'm gonna do that, first of all, I'm gonna teach what I call a watch me. This is something I use a lot. I use it when I'm walking my dogs. I use it when we're on movie sets together. Yes, Rossi here has even been in a movie. He's in a feature film that just came out called Think Like a Dog. So everyone's looking for movies to watch at home. You ready? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask Rossi to sit. Good boy. And I'm practicing this in my living room. That's what I want everyone else to do at home too. Don't go outside, there's so many distractions. Right in your bedroom, living room, kitchen's a great place to start. And I'm gonna ask him to sit and I'm gonna take a treat and I'm gonna go straight from his nose to my eyes. My goal is for him to watch me. Ready, Rossi? Good boy. And I'm super fast. You saw how quick that was. You guys can try it at home, do it along with me. And as I give him a treat, it's really important. Watch how I feed him. Good boy. I'm going in a straight line. So the reason for that is we don't wanna break that eye contact. So for example, if I go like that, he's looking out there, he's not looking at me. And that's not what I want. Sit, ready? Good boy, it's very nice. And as he's doing it right, I'm gonna tell him, they like love, they like unconditional love, just like we do. So you can tell him he's being good. You can pet him, rub him, talk to him, let him know that's what we want. And as he's getting it, I'm gonna to start to use a word. I use the word, watch me. You can use look, say watch, whatever works best for you. Think about what's natural for you and your whole family. Best of all, get everyone involved. I have my boyfriend doing it, have your kids do it, have your parents do it. So it can become second nature for your pets. Ready, watch. Good boy, very nice. So you can see he's doing really good at this. We love practicing this. If your dog is doing good, you can try to make it a little bit harder. So how I'm gonna do that is, I'm gonna make him hold it longer. Watch. Oh, good job, that was so nice. And if you see your dog can't hold it that long, that's okay, this is new. This is something difficult for them. So you can do it super short. And if you have a young puppy, who's maybe fidgety and having a hard time holding still, keep it super short. You can be like, watch, good job. Very nice. Very good job, Rossi. So super simple. Hopefully everyone's having fun with this one. And over time we can mix it up. Now, as we make it harder, we wanna make sure our dogs are succeeding. We don't like to do things where we don't do well. I know I personally don't. And I wouldn't wanna play a game where I never win. So it can be the same for our dogs. So let's say I'm, on the other side of the bedroom and I ask it and he keeps looking away. He's not getting it. So what can I do? Make it a little bit easier. So maybe I take two steps closer, make it so he wins. And then over time, we can work farther and farther away. Stay, ready, watch, I'll lean back. Good boy. And each time I'm gonna go to him with that treat. So eventually, now I can try it with no treat. Ready, watch, good boy. I had no treat there but I'm still gonna reward him. Even though I didn't reward him with the cookie, I'm gonna love on him, give him kisses, verbally tell him he did really good. Ready, Rossi? Watch. Good job, honey. So that sets us up for when we're in the real world. We don't always have treats on us. So when we're first starting, I'm always gonna use treats. I want him to understand. Just like if somebody gave you a piece of chocolate cake or a lot of money, you're gonna wanna win every single time. So that's gonna help him learn. And then once he gets it, we can slowly start breaking it down where we reward verbally or physically giving him lots of love. Good job. And then I'm sure he wants another treat. Let's just do one more for him to have it. Ready? Watch. Good boy. And you can see his tail wagging on that. He actually loves this game. If you have a dog that's not too food motivated, you can do this with their dinner. Sit down at dinner time when they're excited to eat and practice this. So lots of fun ways we can all work on this together. Good job. Okay, who's ready 
to try another way. So I definitely would start with that one. Okay, I see people are excited. Ready? We're gonna do one more. So for this next one, gonna break up some treats here, Rossi. Gonna make it a little bit harder, but I see everyone's doing really good. So we're gonna try this. Hold on. Here, come back here. Sit down. Good boy. Now, only do a few minutes of training at a time because we don't want our dogs to get tired. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my treat in my hand and then I'm gonna make a noise so he looks at me and not the treat. And then I'm gonna give him a different treat. And I'm gonna tell you why I'm doing this in a minute, but first let me demonstrate it. And you can see he's really excited for these treats. Watch, Rossi, watch, watch. Good, there you go, thank you. So let's do this a few times. Rossi, 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 watch. Good, thank you. Look for a second, very good. You might need to bring it closer to me. You can see he's not too good at this one, so that's okay. Just gonna do a little bit of practice. You having fun? Rossi, watch me. Yes, good job. So he's starting to get it. He's starting to get it. If he looks at me, he ends up getting a tree. Rossi, watch me. Rossi, excuse me, Rossi. Yes, good boy. So why is this important? I want him to learn if he wants something, check in with me. That's engagement. The same way maybe you see something in your fridge at your parents' house, you just say, can I have that? Can I have that piece of cake? So it's the same thing Or you're at a friend's house, you're gonna ask them. So that's what I want. I want him to say, hey, could I have that? So we're on a walk, he's not just like, I want this stick, I want this toy. He's gonna check in and I'm gonna tell him either yes or no, we can't, I'm gonna give you something else. And that's gaining respect. We're gaining to communicate together and we're gonna learn to bond over this. And that's what's really important. From this, I can teach so many other things. Sit down, ready? Let's see if he looks at me. Let's see, watch. Yes, good boy. Thank you, very nice. So a little bit harder than the watch me. And as you work on your watch me, you see I'm saying watch me, it's gonna help. Good boy. We can make it, if we make it a little bit closer, it's gonna make it easier on him. Good boy. He doesn't have to turn his head so much. Good job. The farther I make it, the harder it is. So he has to look all the way. He doesn't know what's happening to that treat out there. Rossi, watch. Yes, good boy. Very nice. Okay, you can have that now. Thank you, good boy. So two super fun, easy things, but let's make it a little bit harder. And if your dog's not succeeding at those first two, hold off on this one. You have something to strive for, something to practice for. Okay, ready? I'm gonna put it there on the floor. You can see he's looking at it. And I know he's not here. Good boy. So I didn't say anything, I just waited. And you saw that he looked at me. I didn't have to see anything. So how did I get that? from practicing this. And let's do it again. Ready? I'm not sure if you guys can see the floor, probably not. I'll put it up here. Wait, no, no, leave it. Good, very nice. And we'll put it one more time, Rossi. And if he goes for it, I'm just gonna close my hand. I'm not gonna yank it away from him. You can see he was like, oh, that smells great. Just close your hand, no big deal. We're keeping this fun for him. Good boy, very nice. And even if he just looks at you for a second, reward that, that's what we want. Good boy, that was a quick look, thank you. Very nice. So these are super fun things we can do and each of these is gonna help us build that bond with our animals. That's how we're gonna be able to take them out. And I'm sure everyone has had their dogs see something on a street that they want and they're dragging them to it. Then if you drop something on your floor, things like that, these are ways we can communicate with our pets. You gotta hold on, you gotta wait till I say it's okay. Even when we cross the street, my dogs sit and we wait and then they look up at me and they wait for me to tell them it's good to go. And then we cross the street. And this is also how I teach my dogs to go off leash. We do a lot of hiking, we're in Los Angeles and we have a lot of fun times together. And when it's safe to do off leash activities, we will because they know to check in. They never go far from me because they're rewarded so much for looking at me. So what I mean by check in is he looks up at me and he asks, hey, 
Is this good? Is everything okay? Hold on, Rusty. So over time, as we're playing these games, he'll randomly just start looking up. Good boy. You saw that. Hopefully you guys caught that. Where he looks up. That's just a random moment where he's checking in. He's seeing if everything's okay, if he can have something. Good boy. Thank you. So as you start playing these games, have fun moments like this. We do this on our walks together. We do this out and about. And so these are unprompted. This is not me telling him, look at me, avoid this, look at me. Come on, come back up, good boy. So when you get those unprompted requests from him checking in, be sure to reward those. Tell your dog how amazing he's doing. Ready? Good boy. Okay, why don't you sit down? Good. So three quick things to review those. We have a watch me. Watch. Good boy. And we're gonna make that harder by scooting back. Rusty Bear. He's like picking up all my crumbs I made. Rusty. Boy. Ready? Watch. Yes. We have the nice game we're gonna put in our hand and we're gonna leave it. Watch. Oh, very nice. And we have the one we're gonna put it on the floor and wait for them to check in. And then go out in the world during your training. When you guys are doing some of the tricks we're doing, see when your dog looks at you and tell him how good he is. That's what we want. We want our pets to engage with us because they're enjoying themselves. The same way you engage with your friends, you check in on them, you call them, you text them. We want our dogs to check in with us. You're having fun time? You're having really fun time. And my dogs do movie work. This is how we make sure that they're having a fun time as well, that they're enjoying themselves and they're having lots of fun working together. So with that said, let's move forward. Let's see, come on. And we're gonna hop onto the next slide. Now, I think it's about time we give away stuff like. So Rover is giving away this awesome Kong box, but we need you guys to help out. So get your animals ready, get those treats ready, and take a selfie of your dog participating in our training today. And you're gonna wanna tag rover.com and Varsity Tutors for a chance to win this awesome box, which has a Kong in it, hand sanitizer, dog toys, bandanas, so much fun stuff. You ready, Rossi? You gonna help them take their selfies? With that camera for everybody. Well, you dropped your camera. Hey, good boy. You help me with the selfies? Good boy, can you show them your selfie trick? Hey, excuse you, you better. Right. Good boy, stay. So hope that everyone's taking their good selfies in. Good boy. And be sure to tag us. I can't wait to see it. And Kongs are something I absolutely love. Um, so hopefully we win one too. <laughs> um, if you don't know what a Kong is, it's that red rubber toy right there. And you can put dog treats in it. You can put their food in it. You can also put things like peanut butter or plain yogurt. I actually like to freeze mine because Rossi goes through his dog treats very quickly. So by freezing it, we make it last longer. And that's gonna make him super tired. So it's gonna keep his little brain active. And at the end of the day, I have a tired dog. So if you don't know what this is, it's amazing. I'm a huge fan. So don't forget to take your photos. Take your photo, Rusty. You're taking a picture, good job. <laughs> and tag Varsity Tutors and Rover. Okay, while you guys are finishing up, I'm just gonna go over what we're gonna teach next. Sit down, good boy. He's having so much fun. I hope you guys are and your dogs too. So next we're gonna go through different types of dog training. I know you're so excited. Just give me a high five. Okay, good boy. So I'm a positive reinforcement trainer. So what does that mean? It means all the training I do is done with love and compassion and it's positive, it's fun. So I'm using treats, I'm using petting, but there's many types of positive reinforcement training. So we're gonna go into this and I use a lot of these depending what I'm teaching. So I'm gonna break it down for you guys. And as we get more into training, you can see what, what type of training works best for you and your dog. You guys know your dogs best. So hopefully these will help make it a little bit clearer and I'll give you guys some fun examples as we get to do this. And then maybe we'll do some fun tricks and jump in with everything. So hopefully everything's, everyone's having fun, ready? So the first one we're gonna jump into is called Loring. So I don't know if you've heard of this before. And what this means is to treat your behavior, we guide the dog into position. Um, so we're gonna use our hand motion and I often turn that hand motion later into my hand cue. So for example, if I'm somewhere noisy, 
I like to have a hand cue so my dogs can he see me if they can't hear me like on a busy street or on set when I can't talk, but I can tell him exactly what I want him to do. So let's explain luring a little bit. I have a treat in my hand. And if you don't have a treat that your dog's excited about, it might be a time for some better treats. I love treats that are mostly meat. Um, and if you don't have that, try a little piece of cheese. You don't wanna give too much. We don't want upset bellies. Um, a little piece of meat, something delicious that comes out at training time. And now I'm gonna bring this treat right to his nose and it sort of makes an invisible leash. It's gonna have him follow it because he's gonna be so excited about this new food. Ready? Oh yeah, good boy. And you can see he's following my hand. Good job, it's like a little magnet. Good boy, there you go. And I'm gonna give him that because he's doing what I want. Good job. So just think, what makes you guys excited? You guys can type it in there. Is it chocolate? Is it money? What, what gets you excited? And then we have to think, what gets our dogs excited? And that's what we want for training time. And you might have a very picky dog. Maggie, who's gonna be joining me next week, my other dog, she is extremely picky. Rock, Rossi here, he would probably eat a piece of lettuce. He's not picky at all. So work with your dogs, try different things out, work with your family, see what they think. Um, work with everyone in your home and together I'm sure you guys could find something that your dog's excited about. So luring means to get the desired behavior, I'm going to lure him with my treat. So for example, when I'm teaching circle, we're not gonna really teach it, but I can guide him in a circle. Good boy. And he gets a treat for that. And over time, you saw my hand went like that over time, excuse me, that could become my hand cue for it. Rossi. Good boy. Very nice. Good job. So hopefully that made sense. And we're going to use that in some things we do in next week's, possibly today. Next one we're going to go over, let's see if we can bring it up, is called shaping. And this is a series of steps we take to do a new behavior. So the best way to explain this is we're breaking it into baby steps. So a crazy one I'll explain it. Both my dogs know how to do a handstand, which is crazy. Everyone always says to me, how, how did you teach that? And I did it through shaping. We break it down through baby, baby steps. So for example, for a handstand, I taught them just to back up and then to back up and put their feet up a tiny bit and then a tiny bit more. So over time, I could build it up to get to that desired trick. Okay. Um, another one would be rollover. That, I don't expect my dogs just to roll over. It's not natural. It's not something they do on their own all the time that I can easily just get it from them. So first I would ask him to lie down. Can you do that? You're up here, so I won't make you roll over. But he can't roll over from standing. So for example, the first step is gonna be a down. And I'm taking these steps, hence we're gonna shape it with baby steps to get to that rollover or whatever our next desired behavior is. So if you guys are stuck trying to figure out how to do something, that might be how you do it. I know, this is so fun. Okay, and then the next one we're gonna go over is called, drum roll, if it comes up. There we go, marking. So it's kind of a funny word to explain it, but we are marking a behavior and this signals to our dog an action we want them to repeat. And I use this a lot. So. You might have heard of clicker training. Clicker training is a type of marking. Probably even have a clicker on me. Ready? Let's see what's this. Good. So clicker training is a type of marking. And I often use my words when you see me train, and we'll see it in a little bit. I often say yes or good to him. That means he did something right. But what's important about this is you need to say it at the exact moment your dog does something. So let's say. I'm teaching him to sit. And he, if he sits, let's see. Can you see on your own? Yes, good boy. I have to say it right when his butt hits that ground. Why? Because if I say yes, if he looks up to the light, he thinks that's what he did. That was right. So this one can be a little bit hard. We don't naturally reward ourselves on this type of timing. So if you're the fastest one in your family, this is a great one for you. Really be on top of that. Um, but the thing is, we kind of have to catch them doing it often or put them in a position where they understand what we're asking. Um, and we can say yes, and we can mark that desired behavior. Good boy. 
So before we jump into the next thing, I'd love to hear what your guys' favorite tricks are that your dogs know. So type them out for me. Let me see them. Oh, he's trying to steal my treats. Up and up. Good boy. Um, let's see what's coming in. Ross, are you going to do some tricks for everybody while we wait? Can you pound it? Good boy. Can you cover your face? Cover your face. Yeah, cover it. That's not really covering. You're waving high, aren't you? Good boy. Can you speak? Speak. <coughs> down. Can you play a sad dog? Put your head down. Be a happy dog. Oh, you just burped too. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I see lots of high fives. Oh, that's super fun. That's one of my favorite things. Maggie and I do a lot of work at hospitals and nursing homes and she loves giving out high fives. So much so she'll sometimes just sit there with our paw up like waiting. <laughs> um, lots of dogs know sit. Oh, I see some fancy tricks too. Some dogs like to jump. And we have some tennis ball loving dogs. These are all awesome things. And I hope you guys are gonna be even more excited to train your dogs when we're done with this. And next week, we're going to be doing a lot of tricks. So keep these trick ideas coming. And in the end, you guys will be able to vote. And hopefully, you're getting your selfies in. We'll get you guys some new toys and stuff for your dogs if you win that contest. Good job. So now we're going to go over some tips. Rusty, back it up. Hold on. So tips for success. Let me move something real quick. Sorry. So when I do training, Everyone says, you must train every day, and I don't. So we're gonna go over what we do to succeed. First of all, just tiny treats. He doesn't need a treat this big. He's getting little tiny pieces. That's a big piece for him, actually. Let's see if we can show some tiny ones. Tiny, tiny treats. So that's gonna help him not get full, and it's gonna keep him thinking because he's hungry and he's excited for it. So it helps if you have a treat pouch, a fanny pack, Something like that that you can put those treats in so we're not spilling them all over the floor. If you spill them on the floor, your dog's gonna be more interested in looking up those treats than he's gonna be in training with you. So next up on our list is gonna be end on a high note. And what I mean by that is when we have a bad day, we don't wanna do something again. I know I personally don't. And it goes the same for our dogs. So end it so your dog is winning. So let's say I'm trying to teach him to stay. And my goal is to get him to stay from 10 feet away. And it's going really good and I'm getting farther and farther away. And then at 10 feet, he's just not getting it. That's not the time to quit. Instead, go back to where you know he can do good. Maybe it's at eight feet and you know what? Maybe it's at five feet. That's okay. Get to where he can win and throw him a party. Tell him how good he did. It's just so good, yeah. Because that makes it, oh God, dog slower. Fun for him and fun for us. It's supposed to be fun. It shouldn't be stressful. This should be something we really enjoy. And that's why I do this as my profession. I get to train dogs every day and I'm so lucky. It's so much fun for me, but you have to think what's best for the animal and how is he gonna enjoy this? So next up is gonna be short sessions. They get tired just like we do. My average training sessions between five and 15 minutes. So I hear a lot of people say they don't have time to train their dogs. You have five minutes, whether you're making your coffee or before you go to bed, even after you finish your homework. If you're a kid, there's so many different options. So find five minutes, find 15 minutes and say, I'd like to train my dog. It's gonna be good for you and I think you guys will both enjoy it. And 15 minutes a day will make a huge difference in the amount of tricks you guys can learn. And there's trick like classes online, Rover has a ton of trick videos online as well. We'll be doing some on Thursday and you can even win titles, certificates, medals, all sorts of stuff. And it's something fun. I think you'll realize your dog loves doing it and you might want to get into other things such as like agility or scent work or therapy work. There's so many different realms of dog training, but it starts with just five to 15 minutes a day. So keep those sessions short. Don't go crazy. Even if your dog's having fun, keep it short. And I see, excuse me, set them up for success. So what I mean by that, he's finding treats. I am dropping as I'm breaking them. <laughs> as we set them up for success is when I'm inside, it's nice and quiet. I'm in an area he knows he's going to do good. I'm setting him up to succeed. I'm setting him up that he's not going to be distracted. He's going to pay attention to me. But am I going to take him to a dog park where there's dogs running all over and I'm gonna bring a toy he's not really that interested in and try to get a training session in? No, that's not fair. 
we want him to win. We want him to do a good job. I want to do a good job. So think about that. Even going to my backyard, it's going to be harder for him. So maybe my session will be shorter. Maybe I'm bringing my better treats outside. Maybe I'm bringing a mixture of a bunch of treats to keep his attention. So set it up so your dog's going to be interested. So it's a lot of things to think about. But by keeping it short, using tiny treats, and most importantly, dog treats they like, even their dinner, and ending on a high note, you guys can really succeed in your dog training. Isn't that right? Yeah. Okay, so with that said, I want everyone to start voting on what trick you'd like to see. I'm gonna do a few dog tricks in the meantime while I wait for these to come in. Um, so let's see. The options are, oopsies, hold on, hold on. Drop me treats, come here. Feet up, so I use feet up a lot. It sounds so simple, Rossi, come here. Like we saw, Rossi, keep your feet up. Good boy, you could take a cute selfie together. There, shake, good boy. And touch, you guys probably don't know what touch is. So touch is something we can make into a whole bunch of different tricks. So one of our favorites, Rossi, excuse me, ready? I have a treat ready. Ready? Can you tell me a secret? Good boy. Tell me another secret. Come here, ready? Secret. <coughs> no, that's a loud secret. Ready? Secret. Come here. You can step here. Come on. Come here. Good boy. Hold on. Ready? Okay. Secret. Good boy. So that's one of our favorites. Rossi's very good at telling secrets, and that's something you would teach with touch. We also use it on movie sets to teach him how to touch things with his nose and knock them over. So keep voting, let us know. And I'm gonna do some fun dog tricks for you guys and go over some simple things while we wait for those votes to come in. Can you come over here, please? Come here. Down, do a few tricks for everybody. Ready? Go to your right side, down. Go to your right side, good boy. Straight in, Lena. On your feet, on your feet, bow. Okay, high five. Yes. You wave hello. Good boy. Keep pose. Oh, it's a good boy. That's a very good boy. And do we have a mark? We don't. Um, I'll explain what mark training is while I'm waiting for those votes to come in. So if you guys watch Rusty's movie, you'll see there's a lot of different environments there. And the dogs are going all over the place in different scenes. And we can't communicate with dogs just as we do with humans. We can't tell him, go stand over there. He doesn't understand that. So we put down something that he knows to stand on. Excuse me. And that way, when he practices for his scenes, he knows exactly where to go. Get back. Go back. Go back. Hold on. Can you go, Mark? Good boy. And you guys can kind of see he has his foot on it. Good boy. That tells him where to stand. So when we're filming, he knows exactly where to go. Good job. Good job. So let us know once we're done voting, let me know what you guys want to work on next week too. Um, and I see it's pretty close. It looks like it's going to be between feet up and touch. I think a lot of dogs might know shake. And if you don't, that's okay. You have plenty of time to learn it. And we're finishing up the voting. Drum roll. Okay. And it looks like our winner, get your final votes in is touch. That's awesome. That's one of my favorites. I'm so excited to teach everybody this. You excited, Rossi Bear? So hopefully you guys have your treats ready at home and you guys can do this along with us. Can you hop up? Perfect. So when you're training, since we're hopping right into training again here, if your dog's just wandering off and you're having a hard time, recommend putting them on a leash. It might take them a second to calm down because they might think they're going for a walk but that's gonna allow you to keep your dog right there with you. Um, and I have people say, oh, he gets so excited. He runs off and he gets all his favorite toys for me. Set yourself up for success too. Put him on a leash, make it easy for you. And I bet you the more you train, he's gonna learn what training time is and you won't need that leash soon. Okay, so Rossi's staying pretty still so I won't put the leash on him. But if you need to, that's completely fine. I also, I'm setting him up for success a little bit in that he's on a platform. It's called a climb. We'll be going to this a bunch on Thursday. And I use this for so many different things. 
But by putting him up on something, he's more likely to stay. So the little trick you guys can use at home, but make sure it's something stable and it should be something that he can step off of. So a dog bed's usually not high enough. An ottoman, for example, is sometimes great. If you are using a table, please make sure it's sturdy. See, this is not gonna move with him and it can be, he can, he's it's comfortable for him. Um, we don't want something that he could break by standing on it. So don't put your dog on a glass table or anything, but think things through and that might set you guys up for success as well, perhaps on your couch or somewhere like that. So that's gonna keep him focused on training time. If we even like think back to circus times, we see those animals on a pedestal and they're staying. So when he's on here, he knows it's training time and that gets him excited. So try putting your dogs up on something, especially for our smaller dogs. It kind of puts them more at our level so we can be up close and personal for training. You guys ready to touch? You are, you're still ready? Okay. So I'm gonna have my treats ready. And for this, I'm gonna put, end goal is I want him to touch his nose straight into my palm of my hand. Ready, touch, good. Touch, good. See if you can do a high one. Touch, good boy. <laughs> and you see, I didn't have to give him a treat every time he loves doing this. But since he's being so good, I'm giving him a few. Do you think Rossi should have an extra treat? You can let him know. Okay, so to get this started, we're starting so simple. Remember, we're setting them up for success. So have your dog sitting, and you're gonna place your hand right in front of their nose. So for my dogs, this is high five and this is touch. So keep it simple, try to think about what works best for you. And I'm gonna put my hand so close that he can't help but touch it. He's gonna wanna sniff it and see what's going on. Ready? Good boy. Give it a lick too, that's okay. So we're gonna do this a few times. And I'm not saying the word, I'm just putting my hand there. Good. So you see, as he says it, does it, I'm saying good, or I'm gonna say yes, give him a word. Find what comes naturally. If you have a clicker and you wanna use that clicker, make sure you're clicking right when your dog's nose touches your hand. Good boy. Okay, so keep putting that right in front. Good. It's a little hungry dog here. Good boy. Good job. It's a big treat. One on. Good. Okay, so if you find your dog's doing really good at this, next thing I want you to do is we're gonna slightly go to the sides of his face. So we're making it a little bit harder. It's not right in front of him. Now he's gonna have to turn his head a tiny bit. So don't make it hard. Remember, we're still super, super close. So it's super easy. He doesn't have to try too hard and he's still gonna win. And remember lots of positive enthusiasm when your dog does it. And if he doesn't, just give him a second. We're just gonna wait. This is new for them. See, so you might have to hold it there. Good, good job, ready, good, good. So I'm saying good right as he does it, ready? Good, yes, yes. So I try to say yes a little bit differently. I won't ever be in a conversation with my friends and I'm gonna say yes, it's a weird kind of thing. But for dog training, it works great. So I try to use words that he's not gonna hear when I'm on the phone to my friends or when they're over here. It's something that's just for training time. And it's something we want short. We don't want a whole long sentence because that's going to be hard on you when you're training. Okay, so I'm going to put my hand right out to the side. Just think he does too. Good. good boy. Give him a treat. Good boy. So in the beginning, give him a treat every time. And that's where those little treats are important. You can mix it up. Use a little bit of food, then go back to some treats, try different things. He does, some dogs get bored with the same treat. So that's where mixing it up a little bit is going to help you. So if you find your dog's getting this, he's a pro, great. If your dog's struggling, stay here. That's great, you can work on this every single day, just doing this. And I bet you your dog's gonna have a great time and he will get it. But if you find your dog's doing good, it's time to add a word. So for me, I'm gonna say touch, you can use target, you can use whatever comes natural. You can make it banana if you want, doesn't matter. Whatever, whatever's gonna be fun for both of you. But it should be something you remember because next time you train, make it that same exact word. So right as I'm asking for it, because I know he's going to do it, I'm going to say my word. Now, if I'm not confident if he's going to do it, it's not the time to start giving our dogs their verbal cue. If you're like, he may or may not do it, hold off on saying the word. We want it to be 100%. Touch. Good boy. 
So right before I present my hand. Touch. Good boy. Touch. Yes. Good job, Rusty. He's like, I love this game. Okay. And every now and then I'm going to get him up. Just get him back and sit down again. Good job. I don't want him being stuck in one position. I'm like, this is my training spot. It's fun for him, but it's good for us to mix it up a little bit. Make him move. Make him stretch his legs. And we can use luring. I'm luring him over here. And then we'll go right there. Sit. Good job. Touch. Yes. Touch. Yes. So he's not even getting up. You can see this is pretty lazy and fun for him. He could just sit here and touch things. I wish I could just touch things and get cookies and delicious goodies, but it's Rossi's training time, not mine. <laughs> You're having fun? Touch. Yes, good boy. Okay, good boy. So if your dog is doing good at this, don't rush it. This is probably a great place to end on your first or second day of training. So remember, we want to end on a high note. And so often we get so excited that they're doing good dog. I want to do more. I want to do more. But this is a lot for them. So we don't want to push it. Keep it fun. Keep it simple. So let's say you're trying the next day in a few days even. And don't expect him to be as good as he was last time. So maybe I spend half my time doing it forward and half my time on the side. Today, I'm still going to start on the forward. Good, because it's a nice refresher for him. Can't expect him to jump in the deep end. Make sure he remembers, but then we can maybe spend... Just do a few of these, touch, good boy, and then jump right to the side. Good job. So as we start mixing it up and we're moving a little bit faster now, I'm going to start asking him to get up. So I'm going to move my hand a little bit farther away and he's going to have to stretch. Touch, good job. Maybe touch, good. So now if I put it really far away and he didn't get it, it was too much. So if I'm like, touch, he's like, no, I'm not doing that, mom. But if I try it here, touch. Good. And that's what I mean by set it up so your dog wins. That was too much for him. And that's okay. He's had a long day. I know. Thank you. But if I go here, he's saying, hey, I can do that. And maybe that's the one we end on. He won there. Good job. He's like, no, mom. Touch. Yay. So have fun with this. Try it lower. Touch. Good boy. Maybe. And I can even back him up. Rossi, come over here. Okay, he's off camera, but he's promised he's there. Touch. Good. <laughs> and I have a lot of dogs who, when they're coming, they have to stop five feet away. This is a great way to say, come, touch, and get your dog super close to you. Or I know a lot of dogs that like to play fetch. Who has a ball lover out there? My Maggie is ball obsessed, but she'll drop the ball five feet away. So if I tell her touch, she's going to get up close and bring that ball right to my hand. So I'm sure you guys can create fun ways to do this together. And if you have a boyfriend, a husband, you have your parents in the house, this is really fun to do with two people and something I love to do. I don't have anybody here with me right now. So I'll pretend is I'm going to have one person say touch, Rusty, touch, good boy. And then I'm going to put my hand away. And then my friend who's on that side can say touch, and he's going to run over there and do it. But once they touch your hand, you got to put your hand away. And it's a nice like monkey in the middle where he's going to run back and forth. We're gonna work his brain and we're gonna work his body where he's gonna run around and have a really fun time doing this. Now, I know earlier I showed you our secret trick, which is one of our favorites. So how did I get that? I taught him to touch. Good boy. Good job. And then I tried it near new objects or near my arm. Good boy. And then eventually, now only do this once your dog really knows it. This is getting a little bit advanced, but set some goals for yourselves. I'm going to put my hand right near my face. Touch. Good boy. Touch. Good boy. Okay, ready? Touch. Good boy, Rossi. You're doing so good. Doing so good. And if he's getting bored, some, every now and then, I'm going to give him something else to do just to mix it up. So he's done a lot of touch. So let me, he loves circling. So we'll do a few circles. Circle. Good boy, circle. Circle. Good job. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then we'll do another one. You ready? Touch. Good boy. Good boy. So we're almost there. Grab an extra sheet because we are going through our cookies here. Yes, please. So as we're getting closer and closer to finishing our touch, and you can see this is baby steps. Anyone remember what this is called when we take baby steps? Type it out. I see a few people remembering. Come on, guys. 
We just went over it. That's right, shaping. So we're taking baby steps. I started here, 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 we're getting closer. Rusty, wait. And now eventually, I'm gonna try it. Hold on, Rusty. I'm gonna say touch. Good boy. And then I'm gonna start adding my other hand. This becomes my cue to him. Touch. Good. And now I'm gonna say touch. Good. Touch. Good boy. Give a treat for that. That was so nice. And now I'm gonna start giving it a different word. So I'm gonna say secret and touch. Ready, Rossi? Secret, touch. <gasps> no, that's a loud one. That was right in my ear. Ready, touch. Good, touch. Good boy, very nice. And you can see those are all the steps I took. It's not quick, but it's fun. We had so much fun training this. And now we can do it anywhere. He likes doing it and my other dog does it too. So I can sit there and get secrets from both of my dogs, which Pretty lucky about that. I see. Yeah. So with that said, um, I believe we're gonna do some questions soon. We're gonna do a lot more training next week. So also guys, tell me what tricks you wanna learn. Um, circle, high five, lay down, head down. I love head down because it's one of our movie tricks. So this is how we do a sad dog, a sleeping dog. Lie down, be a sad dog. Be a happy dog. Oh, good job. Except your tail's moving when you're sad. You put your head down this way. Head down. Oh, good boy. Very nice. You panned it for everybody. Be nice to meet you. <laughs> so I know we have a bunch of questions coming in. So keep them coming. And I'm excited to answer some of these. And hopefully you guys are having fun right now with your dogs or your cats or your birds or whatever animals you are using to train with. Perfect. Ooh, I, I didn't know these worked on birds. That's exciting. Yes. Um, fish, maybe, yeah, like I guess, you know, it's the yeah, same you can, psychology. You can definitely do it with fish. I have a friend wow. who has her fish going through little hoops and everything. So oh, that's yeah, amazing. They're not gonna, we're not going to take them out of the tank. So we're a little bit limited on what they can do. My favorite of all my animals I've ever trained, though, definitely the dogs. So get your dogs trained, your cats trained, have cats jumping through hoops. Jumping through your arms is another fun trick. Rossi likes that one. He's not the best jumper though. Rossi, let's see. Do you want to do one? Ready? Jump. No, jump. No, I'm falling. I'm tired, mom. You too tired? Okay. <laughs> He's like, I'm not jumping. <laughs> That's, we can give a little bit of break. We'll put you on stage here and, uh, and ask a few questions. Um, one note to everyone. I know uh, a lot of people, um, you know, we've sort of uh, shaped the way that people have been through, if I got that right. Uh, a lot of these classes yeah. uh, that we do the photo opportunities toward the end a lot. So anybody that didn't get your, didn't have the camera ready picture, we'll take a break about halfway through Q&A and get, uh, get another opportunity there. Um, first one, we'll kind of throw a, a softball here. But I think the most common question we've had is, can you repeat the name of the movie that Rossi's in and let people know where they can find it? Absolutely. So the movie he is in is called Think Like a Dog and it's a family friendly movie. He did it when he was eight months old. So fun story, they were a little hesitant if he should do it or not. He's not the lead dog. He plays the love interest and he actually plays a girl dog. So see if you guys can spot the girl baby Rossi um, it's with Josh Duhamel, Megan Fox, and it's super, super cute. Um, filmed it in New Orleans. Did you like filming it? And he went crazy seeing himself on TV. I have to post a video of that. <laughs> um, and it's available on Amazon, on Walmart. It's a bunch of places, but think like a dog. Um, and he learned a bunch of new tricks. My favorite one, and I'll give it away a little bit, but you guys can look for it, is he has a love interest dog and they do a dance together where he weaves through the dog's legs. And that's an actual thing we trained him to do just for that movie. At eight months old, you're a superstar. You're a superstar. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> Impressive. That's versatility. If you can if you can train a boy dog to play a girl dog, you know, a baby to play a love interest. That's uh, that's pretty impressive. So I think um, that also goes with a fun trivia we can do for next week, and I'll answer it next week. Next week, I'm gonna have my other dog Maggie joining us because Rossi is gonna be filming. So Maggie's obviously a girl dog and she plays a boy dog a lot. She knows a lot of behaviors. She skateboards, she does handstands. She's quite a ham. So can you guys guess what a common dog trick she has to do on movie sets is? So it's not what you normally would think. So 
put your crazy guesses out there. I can't wait to see them. I'm seeing a few come in now. And next week, I'll actually demonstrate it with Maggie and we can see how she does it. So it'll be super fun to see. And I think it ties in with Rossi being a girl dog a little bit. <laughs> Perfect. I love the teaser. I love the teaser. Um, hey, I think the other most common question we've been getting, um, and there are multiple words for it, right? Kind of like touch and secret is um, how do we get, you know, especially young dogs when they get excited. Um, some people are saying biting and that's scary, but a lot of nibbling. Um, dogs that get excited, you know, even one person said, how do I get, you know, uh, my dog to stop nibbling me to blood, which I thought okay. was, wow, okay, we really need to work on that one. So let's make sure that one get, gets asked. But when dogs get excited, especially puppies, how do we get them to stop biting and nibbling? Absolutely. So there's a few different answers to this. So I'll give you guys a few short answers. One is figure out why they're nibbling. If they're a puppy, young puppy, puppies learn to play with their teeth. That's just what they do, those big teeth. So they don't understand. So we need to teach them the appropriate things. So this is more so a puppy than a young, older dog, but we can work with it with older dogs. So if he goes to bite me, I'm gonna say no, and I'm gonna give him something he can chew on. Yeah, good. Make it exciting for him. Make it fun. Whether that's squeaking it, chasing it around the ground, making it something your dog's interested in. Um, make sure they don't have a teeth problem. Sometimes they bite because things are hurting. Just like us, we need to go to a dentist. Sometimes they do. So make sure nothing is wrong that we're just missing. Um, biggest thing is, one, tire them out. Puppies and older dogs, they get a lot of energy. And one of the top things they do is they're like, hey, play with me, play with me. I'm going to bite you. And it's not meant to be mean, but it's excitement. So go for a run together, throw the tennis ball. We're gonna go over a lot of mental games next week. So we're gonna use a lot of those and those are gonna help you a lot. And that's my favorite way to tire a dog out. But doing things like watch me where they have to sit and they have to concentrate. So maybe you're standing instead of sitting like I am. So that they have to sit and reward that really quickly before they even have time to think about biting. So super fast, we're not gonna wait five minutes. I'm not gonna put my arm out to him. It's gonna be super fast, here's the treat. Okay, go ready, watch, good. So they learn, oh, if I sit, I'm gonna get this. This is my offered behavior. One, another thing is make sure they have appropriate toys for them to chew on. So I like to make sure if I have a dog that's super chewy, give him a super hard rubber toy. There's lots of great durable dog toys out there and maybe freeze it, put some peanut butter in it, give them something that entices them and then when they're chewing out, tell them how good they are. So many times we're like, that was bad, that was bad, that was bad. But we don't remember to tell him, oh, he's not doing anything naughty. <laughs> tell him how good he is for those moments. Um, here's one, for example, it's just a hard rubber toy. I can put some treats in here and he'll be super busy with this for like half an hour. And we're gonna go over a bunch of fun mental exercise toys. I know this is so fun, but tell him he's good. And if he tries to chew on his leash, I'm gonna, put a treat to his nose so he drops it. He's gonna open his mouth for that treat and then I'm gonna exchange it and give him something that he's gonna like playing with. Ready, get that. And as he does it, I'm gonna tell him, you're being good, good boy. And that's what we want. Reward those good behaviors, those desired behaviors. Um, and sometimes they're just too excited. So lower your level, give them something to sit down and relax and do. Maybe it's giving them a bully stick where they can chew and get out that energy or a Kong that's frozen. Chewing helps dogs get out some excitement and stress, but sometimes it's just too much. They need to take it in. So if you notice during playtime, your dog's playing too much and their energy's up here, we need to bring it back down here. And that might be time to relax, time to sit down. <laughs> He's so excited about this toy. <laughs> He's like, oh, that was great. <coughs> Rossi, come here. So um, hopefully that answers redirection give them the correct appropriate toys and try to get some focus instead of jumping. They often don't know what we want. So they're jumping for things or grabbing for things. We can teach them as we did with our engagement. This is my desired behavior. You want this? And so he knows he needs to sit. So instead of jumping at me, ask them for what you want. Ask him to sit, ask him not to grab me. I need you to sit and stay. And then you can go play with this. Good job. So hopefully that answers and we're gonna dive a lot into mental engagement next week. So that's a very short snippet of it. That's great. Well, like you said, it all kind of starts with engagement. They can read your cues. So exactly. um, kind of takes us all the way back to the beginning. Um, hey, one question for you, actually two uh, um, logistical things. Um, one, um, 
next class is Thursday. I think we've, we've mixed up next week, Thursday. We get, ex humans get excited when we're doing these things too. So just anybody who's, uh, you know, wants to make sure they're here um, to hear the trivia answer and, and all those things. Uh, make sure remember class is uh, Thursday. So two days from today, I want to make sure we got that out. I think uh, we've said a couple of different things. Sorry, um, Thursday, oh, same no time. Worries. No worries. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, we get, we get excited. So, you know, this is kind of, I don't know if that was luring, but I was, um, you know, kind of trying to make sure we, uh, we shaped you back to, uh, to the mark. Yeah. Um, another one is, can we get, while Ross is a little bit relaxed now, can we get another 30 seconds for photos for those who, uh, who missed it the first time through? Yes. Perfect. All right. Take it away. Ready, Yossi? Come here. Sit. Good boy. Are you going to hold your camera? Ready? Stay. Can you look? Stay. Good boy. Hold it. Hold it so you can take a picture. Stay. Good boy. Good. Can you pose for some pictures? Pose. Down pose. Stay. There. Get the camera. Good boy. Good boy. You want to wear a camera? <laughs> Take it. Stay. You're dropping it. You're helping them take their pictures? Hopefully I'm getting some good pictures. I cannot wait to see all of these. So keep snapping away. We've, the, uh, the team here at Varsity Tutors has been cheating and uh, tells me the feed is amazing right now. So, uh, so you'll definitely want to be able to, uh, to see that. So huge thanks to, uh, to Rossi. I know, uh, yeah, it's got to be a it's pretty exciting session. Just so to sit Not still, only perfect. dogs, get your all your animals out there in a photo op. <laughs> good point. Yeah, good point. We've been saying dogs, but great. Hey, the um, one, a couple other questions. People, especially just because we may be uh, talking to Maggie on Thursday and not Rossi. We'll yeah. make sure Rossi gets uh, his moment in the sun. Um, to, oh, there's Bob. Oh, right on cue. Um, most common questions other than the, uh, you know, the biting um, have been, what kind of dog is Rossi? And how did he get the name Rossi? So this is a super fun question. Oh, they're kissing each other. Maggie, can you love him? Love him. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> can you love him? I oh, know, that's so good. <laughs> um, so Maggie here is a shelter dog. She's from a local Los Angeles animal shelter. She is a Bichon poodle, cocker spaniel mix. Come here, Megs. She loves filming time, so she's like, this is exciting. And Rossi Bear, because he looks like a teddy bear, um, he is a Cavalier Bichon poodle, also known as a Cavapuchon. He looks like a teddy bear. And he's apricot colored, so as babies, they start super dark red. When you look at baby photos of him on my social media, it does not look like him. Even seeing him in the movie, it looks like a different dog. And his name, he's actually named after Valentino Rossi, who is a motorcycle racer. We are a huge outdoors, doing fun adventures family. And we are also big in motorcycles. So our dogs love riding the motorcycles with us. Maggie's a huge fan. So we thought it'd be fun to have one named after Valentino. Valentino loves his fans and he likes to go fast. And Rossi means red and he was red as a baby. So Mr. Rossi Bear, now he's busy eating treats. <laughs> here Max. why don't you join first? perfect thank you and that actually kind of leads us into another as you talk about you know shelter dog rescue dog are there any particular strategies for you know i know it, it's so common now uh to get rescue dogs i know uh, one named sunny in chicago is watching right now um are there any strategies specific to training rescue dogs who you know you're not quite sure what they've seen in the past so yeah any dog can be trained maggie here is almost 12 years old and she learned a new trick last week so can literally learn at any age, but we want to make sure they're comfortable. Can you hop up? Good girl. Yes, I think. Good. So we want to make sure that they're comfortable. And that's a great way to do these simple things, teaching us sit and rewarding that. Going for walks together. Some of the stuff we're going to go over next week, engagement games. We want to build that confidence up. And the best way to do that is through training. So watch me, stuff like that, touch. It's one of my favorites to do with even new puppies. It was the first thing I actually taught Rossi. And it's something I use all the time. So stuff like that and making sure don't expect a lot because we don't know their background. So I slowly introduce dogs and shelters to new things. Like Maggie was super scared of large groups of people. So I wouldn't walk her through large groups of people. Instead, we'd walk through two people. And I'd tell her how great she did and took the slow steps 
shaping to get her used to big crowds. And eventually I would take her to downtown Disney where dogs are allowed and we'd walk through crowds and she loves it now because we did those baby steps. Don't rush it. Whether a shelter dog or a dog from a reputable breeder or a dog you know their history of. Just baby steps to get to that greater goal so that they enjoy it. We don't want to rush anything with dog training. Perfect. It all goes back to those fundamentals. I hope people were taking notes, although they were probably juggling treats and, uh, and dogs today, but it comes down to, like you said, shaping, setting your dog up for success, kind of baby steps, you know, let them end on a high note. So um, great. Um, hey, one other big question I know you've been excited to answer. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about Rover? Uh, Maggie, we're not doing that. Um, yes. Yeah, so Rover actually has a special deal. We'll tell everybody about that in a little bit but it's the largest network of pet sitters. So what that means is there's people down the street from you probably that are watching dogs in their home. So, and that could be doggy daycare, it could be dog walkers. And it's what I use when I personally go out of town just because I don't want my dogs in a kennel, I want them in a real home. And if you're even considering getting a dog, being a Rover sitter is a great option too, because you get to have dogs in your home. But you get to go in there, you read real reviews, and it's real people. Your dog's gonna hang out on the couch with them. It's gonna have dinner at the same time you guys feed your dog dinner. And there's nothing like that. Dogs really are a part of our family. My dogs do absolutely everything with me. And so I want them to be loved when I'm out of town as well. So if you go to this website, rover.com slash varsity tutors, you can get $20 off your first booking, which is fantastic, a great way to get your feet wet, try doggy daycare. and a lot of us have been home a lot right now with our animals. A lot of dogs are going to probably have some separation anxiety, and it's going to be a bit weird when we go back to school and we go back to work. So having a dog walker or doggy daycare is a great option just to see, get our dogs back on our schedules a little bit and help them adjust so that they're not as frightened by all these changes. And then, of course, if you go on our blog, rover.com slash blog, there's a lot more training videos, a lot of content. Um, everything from like baking, you guys can make your homemade dog cookies together. It's just endless fun things you guys can do with your dogs. So super fun stuff. And we have a lot more tricks coming next week. So excuse me, you are blocking the full view, Miss Mags. <laughs> so I can't wait. We're going to get deep into trick training. We have a bunch of tricks to go over. And we're also going to go over some issues of dogs barking at the doorbell, jumping on guests. I know those are probably some common questions I've seen come up today. So we'll definitely get those answered as well. What a, a huge, huge thank you to Nicole, to Maggie, to Rossi for, uh, for showing us all kinds of great things today. On the way out, we will get those Instagram handles back up for everybody so that uh, if you do want to upload those, uh, those photos, we're thrilled to see them. Um, the entire Varsity Tutors Slack network is, uh, is going crazy, uh, excited about those. So um, a big thank you to, uh, to our celebrity dogs. Uh, everybody come back on Thursday. Remember, next class is, is Thursday featuring Maggie and some more advanced tricks. And uh, like I said, uh, let's get those Instagram handles up so you guys know where to, to tag those photos. And uh, we'll see everybody on Thursday. So thank you, everybody.